but this is the other thing blew me away last night. So so John sends me this email and he says, oh, also Lenny's involved in. No, actually, he didn't say involved in. I read it as involved in this other show called Three Little Birds. He said, here's a link if you've got time to watch it. And I'm like, i got time to watch this. I want to watch this. I want to see what it is. And then what unfolded was one of the most beautiful hours of television I've seen for ages. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. So I rewound it because I thought I saw something at the beginning and I wasn't quite sure. And so I'm five minutes and I think, hang on a minute, I need to go back. So I went back and it said, you know, the pre-title said, created and written by Lenny Henry. I thought, he's in charge of the whole shebang here. It's called Three Little Birds. It's coming to ITV soon. It's stunning, Lenny. Thank you so much. Stunning. That's really nice. Well done, pal. Uh, would you like to frame it for people listening? Um, a lot of people kind of think it's about my mum. There's bits of my mum in there. She told me lots of stories just before she died. Um, so did my dad. Uh, and uh, I went to ask my aunties questions and my cousins and my sisters. We have a thing called the Sibs, where we talk about what it was like growing up in Dudley when we were little. And I did lots of research. Angela Ferreira, who was one of the producers on it, gave me her parents for research. So I talked to them. We did lots of Zooms, did, read lots of books, looked at lots of pictures. And I wanted to write something about post-Windrush. They always talk about Windrush, which is 1947. But my mum didn't come here to 1957. She came here with her sister and a mail-order bride for my Uncle Clifton. And every time I hear that story, I kind of think, that's a TV series. I want to write about that. And then Russell T. Davis was my mentor on it. And he said, well, what else? What else? And we did all this research. And I just thought it'd be good to trace these three, three women and coming to Britain with all the expectations of having a Commonwealth passport and thinking everything's going to be great and they're going to be welcomed. Yeah. Everybody's going to love them. And hooray, the streets are paved with gold. And to realise that it's not like that. Uh, to realise that people don't know who you are. They think Jamaica's in Africa. You know, my mum got chased down the road by some kids saying, where's your tail? <clears throat> There's a lot of racism. You know, they're having to deal with oppression and the patriarchy and stuff like that and get a job. And it was all about that. <coughs> There's a scene in episode one where they, they literally go to Notting Hill for the first night because they can't do Tilbury to Dudley in one go. And there's signs in the window that say, no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. And um, one of the characters said, why did they invite us here if they didn't want us to come? Because a lot of people forget that we were invited to come to this country. Um, so I think it's all the feels. I think it's it's this humour in it because you don't overcome... There's loads of humour. You don't overcome it. hardship without a sense of yeah, humour. totally. You'd be crushed if you didn't laugh at things sometimes. And there's, a, there's quite a lot of tragedy in it too. And I just wanted to... I put it... I kind of, it sort of all came out of me. It was almost like this was the story that I've been waiting to tell for my entire life. And there are some wonderful people in it. Rochelle Neal plays Leah. Um, Saffron Kuma plays Chantrell, Leah's sister. And uh, Hos uh, Yasmin Bell Bellows plays Hosanna, the very uptight, churchy um, church lady. And Javon Prince plays the brother, Aston. They are fantastic in this. And I, I hope you watch it because it's going to be lovely. And it all comes out in October on Sunday nights, I think, at 8 o'clock. It's going to be massive. And it drops on ITV. And I, and you're going to be able to see all of them on ITV X. And it's, I think it's what I've been waiting to do for my whole life, this it come, series. It seems to have... I mean, it was it doesn't hasn't landed fully formed, but it cut, it's so full. Do you know what I mean by that? It's it's so complete. It's, and it is stunning. It's stunning telly. It's beautifully shot. It's fantastically cast. Thank you. It's got a great rhythm to it. It's got a great look to it. It's just awesome. I love being in the company of that show last night. Great. Well, there's more to come. And uh, there's, a, there's a mini riot in episode two, which is really worth... <laughs> It's great. It's, it has everything in it, I think. We try to put as many high points in terms of births, marriages, deaths, christenings. We put everything in it that we could think of. You're talking, you know, I, you know, we, we've we known each other for ages. You know, we both had our lean periods, we've had the highs and lows and rough and the smooth and all that kind of stuff. But you just, you're just in such a purple patch at the moment. The last time you were on, it was to talk about August in England. Caroline, who didn't want paying for anything, <laughs> versus his wife said, I need to send Lenny a review as well because like, she went to go and see you in August in England and Vass said well that's done he was on last time talking about it she said, I don't care I want to review it should we play it alright this is the last thing go ahead Lenny was on to talk about last time he came in best thing I've seen in years amazing so funny and clever but so deeply poignant and breathtakingly sad in the same breath amazing it was so moving all four of us came back 
in floods of tears, but so elated and inspired, and we couldn't stop talking. You stop being so good, please. <laughs> I'm really upset now. <laughs> what are you doing to me? That's really lovely. Um, Lady Henry, a, this is your life. That was a leg. <laughs> oh, God. Is Uncle Clifton da, coming on? Da, da, da. That was a show. That's very... Thank you so much. Uh, the, the, it's, uh, it's almost as if um, I know what I'm here for now. You know, I spent a lot of time doing all kinds of things and doing... And mimic... I'm a mimic. I, I was a natural mimic from the time I was 15 for a very long time. And then I thought, there's got to be a moment when you stop copying other people and doing what you want to do. And I think there's been a struggle with that. And finally, I've gone, OK, well, I, I want to act and I want to write. And I think that's kind of what I've been aiming at for the yeah, last yeah. 20 years. And really. with that comes a lightness. You do seem lighter, if you don't mind me saying. Thanks. You know. Do you know what I mean by that? <laughs> you're saying I was fat. No, do you know? No, you know what I'm saying. You can, you're 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 coming with a different spirit now. It's Thank like you. it's like you're you feel free. I don't know if creatively. I certainly think, uh, and I, I, all my stand-up comedian friends, big up. I, I, I certainly think that being a stand-up is the hard yards. You yeah. know, every night you're working, every night you're writing, every day you're editing it, you're trying it out. Some things aren't funny. Some things are funny. I think. Being a stand-up is a noble profession, and I loved it. I'm 35 years, but there was a moment when I just went, this isn't all that I want to do with my life. Mm. I still love it, still like the idea of it. I think I kind of know what to do to put together a new show, but I think there's other things to be doing. So when I was asked to do Shakespeare, when I was asked to be in an August Wilson play, I leapt at it because I thought, this is a new experience, and I think it's really good to do things that are new, that challenge you, that mean that you can collaborate with people. And I realised that I've been on my own for ages. Why not do things where you get to collaborate and work with a team? Yeah. I didn't want to be on my own anymore, yeah. and I think that's lifted me. I think, Maybe you never wanted to be on your own. No, I never wanted to be on, but from the age of 15 to, to just now, I was this guy who was on his own all the time, going all over the country. Was there a moment? Yeah, I think you've. I think there there are moments when you hit walls, and I kind of went through these kind of strange mental things where I was thinking, "What is this?" You know, you question your life, you question what you're doing these things for, and eventually, I came out the other end and thought, um, "I'm not going to do that anymore. I think I'm going to do things where I'm surrounded by people who want me to be better." Why not do that? Why not work with a team of people that are going, go on, Len. Yeah, yeah. You know, Barry Rutter said, you know, the thing about you is you've never had corridor time. You've never sat in a corridor with a fellow actor and said, come on, let's learn our lines together. You know, and I think that's a very healthy model to have. This thing of being in a car late at night and eating at motorway service stations is OK for a while. I think particularly when you're young. Yeah. But I think <laughs> now, I don't, want to be, I, I don't want to be in a motor, motorway service station, even if I've got to be there. That's the thing. It's like a lot of motorway services. It's a yeah. lot of Ginster's pasties. And it's it's lovely for a while. Well, they say, don't they, youth is wasted on the young. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's fine. I want to be at home. I love being at home. I like, I like seeing my... Do you know who says youth is wasted on the young? What? I don't know, nobody our age, that's for sure. <laughs> I love... I, listen, I really enjoyed my youth, but now I kind of think... I've, I've got this thing of, oh, come on, OK, there's, there's a certain amount of time left and you better go. If you're going to do stuff and it's going to be any good, you better work hard and it better be good and you better go now and work with good people, yeah. work with smart people. Let's go. So yeah. that's what happened with August in England. I worked with Daniel Bailey and Lynette Linton and Deirdre O'Hallahan. And that's what happened with uh, Three Little Birds. I worked with Russell T. Davis and Lucy Bedford and people like that. And with um, The Boy With Wings, Clash of the Super Kids, I worked with Samantha Smith at Pam McMillan and we just sat there and went, what would be cool to happen in this story? Collaboration. Yeah, collaboration cool, is it. it? Human Collaboration beings. is cool. Human beings being with other human beings, entertaining more human beings. It's not rocket science. 